All right, so today we're gonna to be putting together a Linux container from scratch, which starts a service. So let's get started. There are hundreds, if not thousands of software that you can actually run on a service. And most of them are actually in Docker form. But what if there's something that's not available or that you wanna to put together yourself? This is something that you can do. So to begin, we're actually gonna be using this software called File Browser, uh, something that you could actually navigate all your files with. It's a super easy program to run. So I'm just gonna show you using this as an example. To start off, we're gonna to have to create our own CT. So we're gonna be using Linux containers only. And I am actually gonna be running this on Alpine. Now there's a choice between using Alpine or Ubuntu. I think Ubuntu uses a little bit more memory on startup. So I prefer to use Alpine for something this simple, but in most cases, I rather prefer Ubuntu because I'm more familiar with it. In this case, I'm gonna call this file browser two because I already made one earlier. Leave it unprivileged, nesting is fine. You can create your password for it. Next template, I am gonna use the latest version of Alpine, which is 3.19. Next disk. Um, Eight gigs is more than enough. You can also always set mount points so you could actually uh, connect it with another container if you want to. CPU, I'm gonna keep as one. Memory, I'm gonna keep as 512. Network, DHCP. Next, next. All right, once that's done, we're gonna head over to our newly created container. Head over to console, and we're gonna start that up. And there we have it. Now, first thing I like to do is APK, which is their package manager, and type update. Now, to be honest, we don't have to install any extra packages for Alpine. So we're just gonna go ahead and download file browser from releases. So we're gonna grab the latest version, which would be Linux ARM 64 right here. Copy link, and then we're gonna do a wget and paste that in there. So now we have one file and we could do tar zxvf, and there we go, it extracts. Now we have to program file browser. Now, technically you could just run it right off the bat and it will work and we would have everything that we need, but we do need to configure it. So the first thing we need to do is file browser config init this will initiate the database so now you're going to see a new database file and now we're going to load it with information so we're going to do file browser config set and how do i know all these options is because if you go into the git repository head over to command runner or one of these and i think command line interface it's over here by set so the first thing we need to do is dash a which sets it so it allows all IPs to come in, or you could set a range, like 192 version. It's up to you what you want to do. So now you can see this address is set. Now I'm personally going to disable authentication login, but if you don't do this part, I think the default login is admin admin, but I'm going to erase that. So I'm going to do file browser config set. Let me refresh the screen. Set auth method equals no auth. There you go. And then uh, file browser users add ID one. This will make sure that this never gets deleted. So perm admin. So the login will always be admin. And then now I'm gonna set file browser dash R to root directory of this. So if you have a mount point, so if we head over to like, let me delete this real quick, resources, and you actually added a mount point, you could actually point it to that mount point instead. And if that mount point is onto another container, you'll, be, you'll have access to that as well. But in my case, I'm just gonna set it to the root directory. So it's file browser config set dash r root. And you can see that. The next one we're gonna set up is our database. So we're gonna do file browser dash d, which is for our database. And we're gonna have it in root file browser, wherever this file is, .db. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. I was supposed to set config set. And now if I run file browser, like I did before, it will say you could actually access this through 8080. Now I'm gonna do an IPA just to see what IP I'm at, 110. And then I am gonna run file browser and I should be able to get 110.80.80 and there's my file browser. Now I have all the files here. I can upload, download, do whatever I want. Now that I know it works, we still need to make sure that this boots up when the system boots. So in Alpine and Ubuntu, there's different ways to set a service. In Alpine, we use OpenRC while 
in Ubuntu we use serve a system D. So this will be different from if you are going to do this on Ubuntu. First we need to create a file. So I'm going to do vi slash etc slash init D. And we're going to call this file browser. And the easiest way to make an init script is this. So this is the wiki to the Alpine page. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But you can see the service, all you need is these two commands. But if you wanted to run it in the background, you do need to create a PID and a, a few other things, just like this. So what I'm gonna do now is actually just create crunchbang, oops, I crunchbang slash spin slash open RC run. And then from here, I'm gonna do name equals file browser, command equals root, slash file browser. I'm gonna put those in quotes. Now, to make it make sure it runs in the background, we're gonna need a PID file. So I'm gonna do PID file equals, and the location I'm gonna keep it is in run. So open quote, slash run, slash, I'm just gonna call this file, file browser, dot PID. And then command underscore, background so it doesn't stop the computer from boot booting we're going to do yes and now we could hit escape colon wq to write and quit and now we can add this to our server so we're going to do rc update add file browser and you can actually add your level here default in it and all this other stuff like boot it's all in here on where you want to set up the introduction to that so start, stop, restart functions, basic examples, stuff like that. You can read through this and it'll teach you how to make this file, but I'm gonna leave everything as default. I gotta also make it executable. So chmod plus x slash etc init the file browser. And there we go. Now service is set and added run level default. And we're gonna restart the service. I'll bind the address already used. You know what, let's reboot. I have too many things going on. Now, in total, running this service with a file browser, you can see it's running right over here. It runs about 30 megabytes of RAM total. So it's very, very little. But if you're running Ubuntu, I think it takes right at 78 megs of RAM just to run Ubuntu to start up. Oh, again, don't quote me because I haven't done this in a while with the same exact program, but it will be a little bit more than 30 megs of RAM just to run file browser. But Ultimately, that's how you run a service in Alpine. If you have any software that you need to run that is actually not available in Docker form or in any type of uh, Proxmox script, that's how you would run it. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.